So just imagine that you're the new democratically elected leader of Taiwan and you wake up that morning and your entire island is surrounded by Chinese military. Every, every surrounding island, not just Taiwan, every, every bit of land that you're in charge of is surrounded by the Chinese. Well, that's what happened this morning. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that the new leader of Taiwan barely had time to unpack his presidential office before China's military surrounded the island on Thursday in a large-scale show of force that risked locking the two sides in a fresh cycle of escalation. The Wall Street Journal also notes that China's communist government claims democratically self-ruled Taiwan as part of its territory, despite having never ruled it. So they just want it. Just part of a grab. You know, just uh, some sort of security concern, right? You know, whatever they throw out there. It just gives a whole new meaning to the term made in China, folks. And we need to start chaining that, that whole made in China concept on the products that we buy to the aggression. We need to link it. And that's what, that's what this is all about, folks. They're, they're not just about the draperies that you buy in Walmart and all of that kind of crap. It's, it's about aggression now. It's, it's getting nasty out there. And folks, I normally listen to MSNBC, but I've kind of changed here recently. I used to listen more to MSNBC back when Rachel Maddow was on, but I'm listening to CNN a little bit more. And last night on Caitlin Collins, um, she had Senator Ted Cruz, who just, just a snake of a character. And, you know, they talked about the normal things like Donald Trump maligning Ted Cruz's father, Donald Trump maligning, insulting, basically, his wife. And he just kind of wrote it off. He said something like, well, you know, I had to decide between being a politician and, and helping people or just getting out of it. So I chose to, to be here, you know, for the people, you know, which is bunch of BS. But here's how that whole interview went. So they're talking about when the electoral count was going on and in the transfer of power. And this is this is kind of interesting. Have a listen to this. But, but what but, Democrats, but hold on a second. What Democrats challenge it? <clears throat> what Democrats? <throat> I know, I know. I, I've been on this road a many, many times. But, but, but no Democrat, <laughs> you cannot compare the two situations. We have talked about that. We've seen the audio of that when they protested hey, but, but, on the but, Senate but, 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 but have they ever, has you ever had a sitting president who refused to facilitate the peaceful transition of power, and refused way, to acknowledge that his successor won the presidency? Uh, so, A, we did have a peaceful transfer of power. I was there on January 20th. I was there on the swearing in. Barely. Air. Yeah, barely. Folks, if it was up to Senator Ted Cruz, there would have been no peaceful transfer of power. In fact, he was actually conniving behind the scenes to have a 10-day audit, as he called it, for the states to review the electors. And what he was trying to do was give wind to this whole fake elector scheme. You know, you remember that. Here's the article on it. This is from the Texas Tribune. So the article says, as Eastman outlined a scenario in which Vice President Mike Pence could deny certifying Biden's election, Cruz crafted a complementary plan in the Senate. He proposed objecting to the results in six swing states and delaying accepting the Electoral College results on January 6 in favor of a 10-day audit, thus potentially enabling GOP state legislatures to overturn the result. Ten other senators backed him up on this, folks. So, no. I mean, he had nothing to do with a peaceful transfer of power. And he was trying to basically help overturn the election. He was hoping that if they got the 10 days that the states would come back and say, you know what, well, we're going to change. We're, we're, we're going to change those uh, electoral count votes, you know, and and guess what? Donald Trump is now president. I mean, that's that's what he wanted. So he is as big a snake as you can imagine. And I don't think you can trust a word that Ted Cruz says. So on Morning Joe, folks, turning to Morning Joe, as we all know, Nikki Haley has decided to endorse Donald Trump, kind of like a fly heading towards the stink. Yep, Nikki Haley is like a fly heading towards the stink, endorsing Donald Trump. And I think Jonathan Lemire had a good take on, on that whole situation. Have a listen to what he said on Morning Joe, folks. In that same speech yesterday, she delivered a full-throated defense of Ukraine, saying the United States needs to give Ukraine whatever it takes, give them every weapon they need in order to defeat Vladimir Putin and Russia. And then in her very next breath, 
said, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump, who, of course, we know <laughs> will not do that. He's rooting for Russia. siding up with, with Putin time and time again. So, so, so what is it with these people? Why would Nikki Haley do something like that? Why would she say, you know, I'm all about Ukraine. I want to see them succeed. I want to see the Russian aggression repelled. And then at the end of the day, say, oh, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump when she knows that's not going to be the outcome. It's because she wants a piece of the administration. It's the power, folks. It's the fame. They all fall for it. And she wants a piece of it. She wants something, some sort of job. Maybe it's not like VP, probably not. But she wants something to do in the Trump organization. So they all bend a knee to Donald Trump. It's, it's that whole concept of party over country, folks. So then they talked about this situation. So we've got this whole strange weird thing going on with America between the reality of how the economy is doing and the perception of the economy. Have a listen. Um, we can start with that idea of the United States being in a recession right now, which it plainly is not. We can talk about why so many Americans believe that, but let's talk first in your chart about where we really are. Yeah, well, it's really quite an, excuse me, an extraordinary poll. We've seen polls before that show Americans having a more negative view on the economy. I've never seen one quite like this. These are the numbers you mentioned in your lead-in that roughly more than half of Americans think we're in a recession. It is divided somewhat by party. More Republicans, 67 percent, feel it than Democrats. But even Democrats, 49 percent, feel it. We've seen this kind of divergence before. Uh, it, and an, interestingly enough, it flips around with every election, not surprisingly. But here's the reality. The reality is the economy has basically been growing since COVID, except for a very small downturn here. Under Joe Biden, it's grown by 2.8 percent a year, which is actually slightly faster than it was growing under Trump even before hmm. COVID hit. That's amazing. And and so you can, so you can see every quarter we've had we've had reasonably strong economic growth. So why people feel this is really quite a mystery. So, Steve, what about, I mean, this other sort of low unemployment, a surging stock market, and yet dot, dot, dot. How do you explain what's going on with the economy? Yeah, you get the same kind of news <clears throat> results when you look at those, those kinds of things. 50% of Americans think unemployment is at a 50-year high. 50% think it's mm -hmm. at a 50-year high. Unemployment is actually at a 50-year low. It's really amazing. Unemployment is below 4%. It's been below 4% for months and months now, and, and it is, uh, it's just extraordinary that people think we're at a 50-year high. You can see some of the highs over here. Mm -hmm. Another issue is stocks. Half of Americans think stocks are down this year. Stocks are actually up 11% this year. They're up 45% since Joe Biden took office. Complete disconnect wow. in people's minds between right. perception and reality of the stock market. And, you know, folks, I, I get it that people are working, they've got kids, there's a lot going on. But at some point, the perception and reality thing has to to kind of meet, right? I mean, the reality of what's going on is far different than what a lot of people think. And not only that, but carrying that whole theme over to this other poll, it's a Cook political poll that they just took. And um, the, the interesting thing about that is given all that positive information, you know, under this Biden economy, it seems like more people are concerned about Joe Biden setting economic policy, which doesn't make sense. Have a listen. Donald Trump has a lead within the margin of error in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania. And he and President Joe Biden are tied in Wisconsin. Swing state voters say the economy is the issue that matters most to them, with their own cost of living being the best way to measure it. They also say they are more worried about Biden setting economic policy than about Trump setting abortion policy. And Biden's age is also seen as more of concern than Trump's temperament and legal issues. Amy, break this down for us. So that disconnect, folks, again, the perception of reality, you just saw the economic news that the economy is actually doing exceptionally well, but yet people are concerned about Biden's role in setting the economic pace, which doesn't make sense. And I blame Fox News for a lot of this. In addition to the fact that people aren't as tuned into the economy, I think it will correct, but it's going to take time and you have to hammer these points because you're, you're fighting against things like Fox News, folks. 
And then there's this other interview that they did with actor John Leguizamo. I hope I got that right. And he's talking about um, the Latino vote. And there's going to be a rally in the Bronx, a, a Trump rally in the Bronx tonight. Really? you got to be kidding me. While we're talking politics, you said you love New York very much. Yes. yes. And uh, is it tonight? Donald tonight, Trump? Donald, Trump Donald Trump's going to be in the Bronx tonight. Uh, the BX? Yeah. The BX. Oh, he's going to get his. Oh, my God. <laughs> the BX don't mess. They don't, they don't play around. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. He's hosting a rally. They, his campaign has said they expect yeah. some He thousands, gets a crowd wherever he goes. Thousands people kinda. show up. I mean, there was no <laughs> real crowd. My, my friend's daughter works there. She didn't see a real MAGA crowd for him. It was pretty empty. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was not, it wasn't that. Well, yeah. I didn't say it was a big crowd. <laughs> it just says, you know, there are people who want to take pictures and stuff. Yeah. But, there's, but there'll, there'll but be what, protesters the too. Yeah. What's the appeal, you think, though? Because yeah. polls suggest he has made inroads with the. And Latino it's still community. tight. Well, because the, some Latinos are evangelical, right. and you know, evangelicals well, wait, all over. Well, wait, wait, that still doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's true. No, it doesn't. Of course, it doesn't make sense. I mean, he's not the, the second coming. No, he, he, not uh, even the, the third or no, the fourth. No, <laughs> he's the apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they need to understand. But, but yeah, I mean, so what is it? I, because I mean, as I'm not an evangelical. I mean, I I I, I, I I'm agnostic. But uh, obviously, he talks about you know contraception and 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 uh abortion and 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 uh sort of anti-lgbtq plus laws i mean the evangelicals believe in that stuff so yeah. that's how you get them so folks thank god that most people don't think like those evangelicals do and they're more tolerant and they're more uh, willing to give people a chance and all of that stuff doesn't constitute the vast majority of America, thank God. But I can't believe at a rally in Bronx this afternoon, it's going to be wild. I can't wait. Till then, folks.